I've been collecting vintage palettes like these for over a decade. They are the cutest thing. And most of them still come with the old paint intact. And apparently even some of the brushes too, which no, we don't use those. <laughs> I gotta do something with these. So I am gonna take hundreds of dusty old, kind of smelly paint chips, brush them up, and turn them into new paint. That's right, I am creating a master vintage palette. So come along with me as I take my paint chip collection and turn it into what you might call a Franken palette that I hope dearly will allow me to paint something wow. So yes, I have the pretty cup full of paint chips, but I haven't been terribly diligent about filling it up more and more every time I buy a new vintage palette. So I am taking my entire collection and removing all the paint chips from these palettes as well. And depending on the palette, how you actually do this changes. A lot of these have these metal trays that if you look at them the wrong way, they're gonna slice your finger open. Uh, you can sometimes pop them out. Other times it's better just to take a palette knife like I'm doing here and just pop those chips out. And yeah, you might be thinking, is there anything holding those paint chips in those trays? And yes, my friends, unfortunately, unfortunately there is. And I fear it is going to be the bane of my Franken palette existence. There is glue. There is glue attached to every single paint chip. I've never received a palette that didn't have crusty, dusty, musty, gross glue on each paint chip. So I have to make a decision. Do I try to carve off the glue on every chip or do I let it go and pick it out later once all of this pigment has started to dissolve? Let's see, I don't know. What would you do? Let me know in comments. So now all of the chips are out of the palette and gosh, I feel like I'm saying chips a lot, but it's what they are. I need to sort these and figure out how many Franken colors I'm going to create. I have these pretty little dishes that I picked up in Chinatown a few years ago, and I just think they're so lovely and I need an aesthetic moment. I've got dust and yuck all over my hands, friends. I need an aesthetic moment. And so let's sort. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Before we sort and have our beautiful moment, I do have some concerns also that are just creeping into my brain. Like these were kids watercolors. So we're talking fillers, maybe even actual chalk dust. I did some research, like could there be asbestos in these? To the best of my knowledge, there isn't. But I have concerns for the quality of the paint that I'm about to invest a significant chunk of my life into making. Okay, friends, like I mentioned, this isn't a how-to, but let me show you the supplies quickly. I'll be using glycerin, honey, and then, of course, gum arabic, and that's all gonna be used to kind of soften up these chips. Palette knives, I've got this little squeegee scraper thing that's gonna come in handy. And yes, a kitchen spatula, one of my favorite tools I don't see a lot of folks using. This is what's called a molar, and that is what actually grinds the pigment down into kind of that lovely syrup that you see in so many aesthetic paint making videos. Now that everything's sorted and we've enjoyed all the beauty, it's about to get a little ugly, but trust me, interesting too. So we have to soak these chips. Uh, at least I think that's what we have to do. So this is where I am taking a little bit of honey, I'm taking a little bit of glycerin, a lot of gum arabic, which I realize all of that, or some of that at least, was probably used to make these original pans of paint. See, I didn't say chips. No, I said it again. So this is my best guess at how to loosen up these chips and how to get them to be malleable, so to speak. Oh shoot, I forgot to mention. When making paint, I always add a little bit of clove oil, and here's why. It prevents the paint from ever molding. Now, it doesn't mean it's never gonna mold, but it's gonna make it a lot harder. And plus, 
When you paint, it smells really good. Okay, so this whole soaking process took a lot longer than I expected. Uh, like overnights and overnights where I would come in every morning and kind of stab each little sticky bowl full of goo to see if these chips were starting to break up. What I realized quickly is that I needed to start adding water. All right, friends, I gotta know, is this interesting? Are you having a good time? I'm hoping at least you're entertained and wanna see what happens if I'm actually gonna be able to create some artwork that is wow. I'm looking for wow factor. Do you think it's gonna happen? Let me know in comments and while you're at it, go ahead and give this video a boop. That's a like, friends, and honestly, it helps others find this channel, and yeah, it just makes me feel good about myself. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Okay, we're getting to the good stuff. The mulling. Mulling is a term for essentially grinding pigment along with some additives. Usually it's some type of gum arabic, honey, glycerin combo, and turning it into this lovely, smooth, kind of syrupy-like substance. The point is you want to get those pigment particles ground down as fine as possible so your paint is of the highest quality and does what it's supposed to do on the page. I'm going to share two secrets about mulling paint. They're really important. You don't want to miss this. Number one, the time goes a lot quicker if you are binge listening to episodes of Sister Wives. And number two, you are going to build up significant bicep muscles, but only in one arm. Uh, you know, there's a number three, and this is important to know only because like, you just need to know all the variety of ways that you're gonna be annoyed when you make paint. Um, you gotta clean all of your tools, supplies, the glass that you're mulling on, all of it, every time, after every color. <laughs> yes, really good fun. You know those paint mixing videos that have like a skadillion views on them? Skadillion? Whatever. Yeah. So that's like relaxing to watch in theory. Um, but in practice, not so much. The things I do for paint obsession and exploration. It's late o'clock, and I still have two more. Oh, to do. Yeah. And just tell myself it's gonna be worth it. All of it, it's gonna be worth it. So I gotta be honest, I did not do all of this by myself. My amazing brand manager, Kristen, who absolutely despises being on camera, so that's why you're not seeing her here, she molded way more colors than I did. I think she did about 10, I did about six, but whatever. So thank you, Kristen, I couldn't have done it without you. Now, filling the pans is definitely one of the most satisfying parts of this. And I really hope it's not the most satisfying part because I still gotta paint with these soon, but anywho. Now we put all of the finished paints in squeeze bottles, thinking that that would make the filling part of this easier. And it did for the most part. I'm nervous, friends. I gotta be honest. The swatches that I've done of these paints so far haven't been all that exciting. Well, maybe except for this one. Uh, and so I, it's got me thinking like the painting that I'm gonna create from these things, <laughs> is it gonna be worthwhile? Is it gonna be maybe just really cool and moody and edgy and vibey and not muddy and gross and grainy and weird. Uh, so let me know what you think in comments. Go ahead, give it to me straight. 
And another thing you can give to me straight while you're at it is a boop on this video, friends. That's a like if you're new here, because it would really help me out. And I have a feeling I'm going to need that ego boost just a little. I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it. All right, let's do this. Now, some of you might be wondering, like, Christy, is this whole process more annoying or less than the all blue challenge? And if you're wondering what the blue challenge is, yeah, I'm going to link that one below because that one was definitely more annoying. So it's a good watch. <laughs> now, I gotta be honest, this might've been the most frustrating part. You fill up the pans, not all the way. And I even rushed this process a little bit. You fill them up part of the way, you're supposed to let them cure for like a week. And let me tell you, I ain't got time for that. So I let them cure for like two days and then you fill them up again. And you should probably let it cure for another week and it's supposed to prevent cracking, but you know what? Nobody's buying these. This is just an experiment and I need to paint with these like now. Okay, we're finally here. I get to load up these pans of all this fresh paint into a beautifully clean new palette. And yeah, I'm excited, but I gotta be honest, I'm also crazy nervous because now it's time to create some art that hopefully I'm okay with. I decided to create a bouquet of mushrooms. Let's see how this goes. So I thought I would use the best paper and that would give me the best result with these paints that aren't ideal, right? So I used arches and honestly, the arches frustrated me a little bit and I just kept layering and layering. And as you can imagine, layering with this uh, Frankenstein palette wasn't the best idea, but I still kind of worked it out. I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in comments, but we're not done yet because I decided to be extra and an overachiever and create a second painting using Legion Stonehenge cold press. It has a little bit of a smoother surface and I promised myself to stick to one layer this time around. So let's see how this one turned out and you're gonna just have to let me know which is your favorite. I learned a ton from this process. Mulling paints is so cathartic, but it is definitely not for the faint of heart. It's a laborious process. And I also learned, or maybe relearned, to appreciate that not all paint needs to be super bold and vibrant and explosive to be enjoyable and to create a satisfying painting result. So I have two questions for you. Do you think I actually succeeded in creating a Franken palette that could produce some interesting, fun, or dare I say successful artwork? Let me know in comments. And while you're there, I wanna know which one is your favorite, painting one or painting two?